Welcome to another Smart Money Concepts video. America is one of the richest nations in the world. Hence, Americans are expected to be more financially capable than others, right? But it's an unfortunate reality that many people do not even understand the financial basics. In fact, the vast majority of Americans are always worried about their finances, and it's quite evident in their spending habits. For example, some spend a lot on unnecessary expenditures and eventually max out their credit cards. Some choose to live above their means, way higher than their salaries can contain. But have no fear, as it's never too late to learn and start doing more with your money. As you learn more, you become more empowered and can make better decisions. This is what financial literacy is, a grasp of the concepts of saving, investing, and even debt. All of this leads to a holistic feeling of being financially adept and having self-trust. In this video, I'll share with you the true meaning of financial literacy and what it means to you. You can even get tips on how to get rich. But before we start, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Smart Money Concepts videos. Financial Literacy Listen, to further understand financial literacy, first, there are a number of things to consider. As I've said earlier, financial literacy digs into different categories. These are things that seem basic, but actually aren't. Your everyday financial status and living, debts and loans, and even differentiating various kinds of debts, such as credit card debt and mortgage debt, budgeting and financial planning, the concept of money in, money out, and investment opportunities. According to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the goal of being financially literate is having life satisfaction through having that sense of control over your money and finances. So in hindsight, financial literacy is the process of gaining knowledge and understanding of personal finance. To be financially literate, you need to know how to make sound decisions and manage your money effectively so that it can last long term. Being financially literate Literate means knowing the right allocation of your income, even doing thorough research on financial matters that greatly affect you and your aspirations in life. But listen, being financially literate doesn't mean just having a lot of income and revenue. It means knowing how to prioritize and organize the money accordingly. Examples are having an emergency fund with savings of at least three months worth of expenses and replacing it afterwards, or raising the amount of your retirement savings every time you get an increase in your earnings. This could even mean doing thorough research on promos regarding your credit card so that you can maximize their benefits. While you can complete courses or read books to become more familiar with personal finance concepts, there's no one right way for everyone. Your path may include a combination of these methods or something else entirely. So here, I'll share and explain to you the six components of financial literacy. Number one, earning, knowing your income. Of course, you need to greatly assess the amount of money you make. Get your paycheck, take a look at it, and know your gross and net income. Also, don't forget to look to see if there are any other deductions from your salary. If you are someone who has multiple part-time jobs or side hustles, gather all of your other income statements and repeat step one, and total your net income. Once you're finished, we will go to the second component of financial literacy. Number two, spending, listing your expenses. After assessing your income, where does all of your money go? If there's one financial tip that I have for you now, it's to fully understand and create your financial budget and then plan its implementation. Now to do this, you need to track all your monthly expenses and then categorize them accordingly. Basic needs, finances, and savings. Usually, 50% of your income goes to the basic necessities such as bills, groceries, utilities, healthcare, gas or transportation costs, and housing. 30% of it goes towards your savings accounts and paying off your debts. 20% then goes towards your wants or anything that isn't considered a need. If this 50-30-20 rule works for you, then do it. But if you want it to be more specific, then it's completely up to you, as long as you are completely honest with noting them down. Number three, saving. Know your target. Save, save, save. Not just for the rainy days, but save because it's really essential. But of course, it's best to save so that you can address unexpected expenses, like when you or someone in your family becomes sick, or when your car suddenly stops working. In my case, I prefer to have a separate savings account so that I can't see my money. For me, seeing it is spending it, so I'd rather keep it in a separate bank account, or even in a separate bank. 
However, I know it's easier said than done, so you should know your goals in order to be more driven to save your money. If your goal is to have a secure retirement, you have to start saving for it. The earlier, the better. As advised by financial planners, it's best to set aside at least 10% of your income each month to achieve retirement savings in a 401k or an IRA. If you plan to purchase something monumental, like a car or a house, you have to save sooner, because the later you save, the larger amount of money you have to set aside every month. Listen, if you plan to repay all of your debts, you should remember this. Pay it off on time or even before the scheduled date so that you can save interest charges that could potentially amount to hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Also, think of it this way. It's just like paying yourself. If you make it a routine, then this will absolve you from unnecessary financial stress. Once you start mounting up your savings, it's also best if you invest. Ensure that you spread out your investments to help lessen the chances of having pitfalls in your portfolio. Want to know more tips on how to be more financially literate? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified whenever Smart Money Concepts posts a new video. Number four, borrowing if needed. I know it's sometimes needed to borrow money to finance larger expenses. Maybe you applied for student loans as a means of studying in college. I feel you, but it's also critical that you research, read, and compare loans and interest rates. Why? Because it will help you create and preserve an outstanding credit score. Listen, the higher your credit score, the lower interest rate you'll have. I know most of you know this, but sometimes the interest of the loan is even bigger than the actual loan itself. Who wouldn't want to avoid that, right? To augment it, there are several factors to consider with payment history as the most important of them all. Bottom line, pay your loans and bills on time to maintain your credit score. Credit is also easily accessible nowadays, but I'm telling you now, there's a really big difference between purchasing an asset with credit and consuming a non-essential with credit. Think of this, if you eat dinner in a Japanese restaurant using your credit card, that means that you used money you don't even have to buy the sushi you just devoured. And yes, both of them are now gone. But if you buy a home with borrowed money, know that you just acquired an asset that has a value and a purpose, even if you're continuously paying for it. Remember, borrowing money to buy unnecessary things will haunt you in the long run. Be wise. Stop splurging recklessly on things that have no value. Don't spend more than your income. Number 5. Protecting your funds. Avoid fraud and scams. It's extremely important to protect your hard-earned money. Always take a look at your savings accounts and credit card statements so that you can review and report if ever anomalous activities are happening. Do not share your passwords and do not disclose any important information about your life to sketchy people. It's true. It's actually better to be safe than to be sorry. And if you have the extra funds, you can get insurance as a means of protection in case something happens. Gaining more knowledge about managing your money is now easy as 1, 2, 3. Just don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified whenever Smart Money Concepts posts a new video. I know it's a long road to take, but being financially literate can literally make you rich. There are some things you can do now to gain more financial knowledge. Research using legitimate resources. Some institutions can help you know more about your financial situation. Your bank, financial experts, or even your credit card issuer can provide you with details on activities regarding your money. They can even give you the statistics on your credit score. If you want to know the nitty-gritty about money and finance, some organizations teach them too. Some of these are the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Financial Planning Association, and the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Try Credit Counseling and Financial Planning. Credit counseling agencies and counselors can also aid you in your financial literacy journey. They can help you with budgeting and loan restructuring methods. Financial advisors or financial planners are also there if you need help in setting up your financial goals. Ask your employer. There are companies that offer financial wellness programs for their employees. Try to ask your employer so he or she can give you constructive insights about your financial situation and goals. The best thing about being financially literate is it makes you trust yourself even more. It helps you set your financial goals and helps you see what you truly desire and need to be happy and content in life. Financial literacy is a form of financial education. It isn't just for people who are working. It's for anyone looking to improve their financial situation, regardless of whether they're currently employed or not. It entails commitment, so you better start right now. Believe me, your future self will thank you. 
Number six, your most burning question. So now to answer the most burning question, why on earth do they not teach this in our schools? Kids are sponges, and when they're taught to become independent and secure, they tend to succeed and thrive in life. Imagine if 330 million Americans learned financial literacy in elementary, middle, high school, and postgraduate schools. Do you think there would be a class system? Do you think there would be poor people? Do you think that people would be homeless or starving to death if they were empowered to manage their money no matter how little and help others in their circle to do so, even from an early age? No, absolutely not. And that's exactly why financial literacy is not taught in our schools. It's to keep us sick and broke. It's to keep us quiet. It's to keep us ignorant. It's to keep us stuck in a system that doesn't work. And that's exactly why Smart Money Concepts is here to help you catch up on your financial journey. Today, everything changes. Have you ever heard the expression, knowledge is power? Starting today, make this your new mantra. Financial empowerment holds the keys to my kingdom. I hope our video helped you understand financial literacy and what it means to you. If you need help improving your money management skills, we are here for you. Just click the like and subscribe buttons now to make sure that you don't miss our next video.